Welcome! Today we're going to talk about James Allen, author of As a Man Thinketh, his most popular book today, but not his most popular book when he died. He uh, was born in England in Leicester, Leicester in 1864, November 28, 1864. And um, he had a pretty average childhood. He's the oldest of three boys. He had two younger brothers. And his dad was doing pretty well in manufacturing, and then I don't I don't know if it was his job or the economy, but things were things were getting bad, and so his dad decided that he wanted to take the family to America. So when Alan was 15, his dad decided to go ahead of the family, so he was able to pay for his own passage, and he went to America. And within two days of being in America, he was robbed and killed. He was found in the hospital. Um, with his wallet empty, which is why they were pretty sure that he was robbed and beaten and uh, really tragic. So word got back to the family and now Alan is the oldest of three children and he has his mother and it's, you know, kind of the mid-ish 1800s, 1870s, you know, to 1880 and he's got to provide. So he goes to work at a factory at age 15 and he works 15 hour days and I was thinking about that that's six in the morning to nine at night for a 15 year old kid um, crazy he liked to read but his own self-education really took off he never got much education past this age I don't know how much education he had as a younger child um, but when he was um, 17 years old he picked up his father's, he found his father's book of Shakespeare, and um, he spent every spare minute. He said he ate, he read it early in the morning, at lunchtime, at dinner time, and late into the night. He read it over and over and over and over again. And when I discovered this about him, it was very insightful because if you've ever read As a Man Thinketh or even portions of it, you know how poetic it is. And um, I touched on that for a minute in the book review. <clears throat> and so, this was, I mean, I'm sure he was poetic by nature. I'm sure that he was already gifted there and that Shakespeare kind of helped him develop that ability. But um, he really, I'm sure, became very, very good at writing and thinking and especially writing poetry because of his experiences in Shakespeare. Uh, one biographer said that it was to the point where he could basically quote most any play because he read it so much. Now, after, um, after Shakespeare, while well, he was still working, but spending every spare minute he could educating himself, he found Emerson. And he fell in love with Emerson's essays. Uh, several of them he read over and over and over again. His favorite one is self, was Self-Reliance. And um, it showed him that he was too timid that he needed to stand on his own two feet, that he needed to assert himself. And it really changed the way um, that he saw himself and he saw the world and the way that he, um, he had more courage after he read and studied this, um, this essay. And he really started to try to assert himself in life and make something of himself. When he was 24, he read, he found Sir Edwin Arnold's Light of Asia. And this was another absolutely life-changing book for him. It's a, um, it's a kind of a fictional biographical st uh, story form of the life of Buddha. And um, how he gave up his riches and, and, and um, went and lived among the people. It says that he sought by the medium of an imaginary Buddhist votary to depict the life and character and indicate the philosophy of that noble hero of, and reformer, Prince Gautama of India, the, re the founder of Buddhism. Um, this is something that James Allen said about this book and about Buddha himself. 
More than a third of mankind owe their moral and religious ideas to this illustrious prince, whose personality, though imperfectly revealed in the existing sources of information, cannot but appear the highest, gentlest, holiest, and most beneficent, with one exception, in the history of thought. So for James Allen, who was a Christian, and actually later married a Christian missionary, um, it was Christ and then it was Buddha. And those, James Allen did a lot of really important things. And that's why I wanted to do an author bio on him. I don't do, I don't do them on very many authors. But he did some things that were, um, that really have begun, changed the religious and intellectual ideas in America. He, he was part of a movement. He was one of the founders. He didn't necessarily see himself that way. Um, and I want to distinguish between what the movement has become and who he was as a person. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about the preparation that he had for his life's work, and then I'll explain a little bit about what he was about and, and the implications of, of the things that he taught. So, one of the things that was revolutionary for Alan and during this time, he spent time um, with, the, with, with the ideal through Shakespeare, and then he spent time with reason and thought with Emerson. And the light of Asia showed him the consistency of truth and of values through civilizations and um, it was, he said that it, it was this bright light that it, um, there was a revelation that was almost blending, blinding in its brilliance and suddenness and exaltation which alarmed me while it transported me into a felicitous life. He says, a curtain seemed to have rolled back from the face of the universe and I saw the causes and meaning of things which had hitherto been dark mysteries and I had become a different man. So he was gaining in knowledge and intelligence. He was very much a thinker and a seeker. And he said that it was especially after reading The Light of Asia that he really became a truth seeker. And he understood, really came to see that that's what the greats were about, that they were seekers of truth. And um, that he needed to try to find and harmonize truth and live truth and be a product of truth. One of the biographies that I found on him that's linked to um, this post is a, this is an article where I'm taking a lot of this information that was written not very long after he died. In fact, they interviewed his wife. And so it's a good earlier, more original source on what Alan was about. I think the author may have even known him. I can't remember. And so these things that I'm telling you are, are really very true to the life of James Allen. At age 26, he read the Bhagavad Gita um, <clears throat> which also expanded his thinking. And then he moved at age 25, um, before the, between Light of Asia and Bhagavad Gita, he's still on this intellectual search. He moves to London, and he's still reading and studying. He becomes a private secretary. secretary. Now he has more time to himself. Now he's only working um, nine to six. And so he uses all of his spare time to read and think, and he starts writing to really influential individuals worldwide, <clears throat> to great thinkers. Um, the, he calls it the voluminous correspondence with searchers after truth all over the world. And at age 29, in the midst of all of this, he meets his wife and, um, and they're married. <clears throat> he writes his first book called From Poverty to Power, which was his most popular. And of course, this has been over 100 years, so these are... Um, these are public domain now, so you can search the, uh, the the titles of his books and you can find his books online and you can read as much about him and from him as you want to. Um, so he wrote From Poverty to Power, which is considered, this author says, which is considered to be his best work. And um, he... After he wrote this book, it was popular enough, they had to live very frugally, but it was popular enough that he and his wife were able to kind of retire. So they moved to a place called Il Frankum in kind of on some, on some land, kind of out of town on a, in a little, a little home so that he could just continue to pursue his writing and thinking. Um, 
he went on to found um, like a, a newsletter type thing called The Light of Reason. And that says a lot about what he was about. And that's why As a Man Thinketh is the culmination of his ideas about what reason can do for us. And he was in that camp that says, you know, human beings don't think enough. If they would think more, they could work through many of their problems. They could solve a lot of the difficulties that they face. And, and that's, you know, the central theme of As a Man Thinketh. In 1905, he established what was called the Brotherhood or the School of Virtue. And he believed that, um, let's see, the rules of the Brotherhood are those principles of truth which the seekers after righteousness in all ages have adopted. Religions change from age to age, but the principles of divine virtue are eternally the same, and these principles are embodied in the rules of the Brotherhood. So I want to distinguish something here in these last few minutes that we have. James Allen was an absolutist and was a Christian. He believed that there was a God and there was a Christ and there were absolutes that, um, that were the same regardless. It was a natural law. There was a set of values that was true for all people all the time. And those values were reflected in the great religions and religious traditions and spiritual traditions in the world. But because he was Christian and he was so devoted to the idea of Buddha, he started this movement that has become the New Age movement today of, of harmonizing Eastern and Western beliefs. Now, in the New Age movement today, it's become all about self and all about meditation, which were things he felt self-knowledge was power. He wanted people to be aware of what they were thinking. He wanted to change the way that they behaved by changing the way that they thought. And he believed that this was based on certain specific values, and, uh, virtues and absolutes that we were required to live to be in harmony with God's laws. It's become the New Age movement that's this subjective relativistic idea of there's there's kind of a force and a power, but really ultimately it's you and you need to listen to the inner self and not anything else. And it doesn't adhere to, you'll have different philosophers talk about um, different aspects of it, right? Like you've got several different names I could throw out, but, um, but there isn't an overarching or underlying foundational set of virtues for, um, for Alan, that was the goal. He also was a contributor to what has become the self-help movement, writing books to average people about how they could improve themselves, not to other thinkers, not to other philosophers, and not novels and stories, not essays, not entertaining, but like, I want to help anybody who's willing to read this. He did it in a poetic form, which was his strength, and I think that's what makes it last. He was committed to the idea that we could change ourselves if we were committed to change. And, um, and I talked about some of the difficulties that people have with a few of the things in his book. I'm not saying it's from beginning to end absolute truth and I buy into everything he teaches. Absolutely not. There's, there's really not any books like that. There's, you know, there's only a couple books like that for me that are my core book, right? Are my core truth. But he has a lot of truth in there and uh, it's very worth reading. But his other books have have great stuff too. He talked about the concept of meditation. And he meant, when he said meditation, connecting with God, a real God that was had laws and was a tangible God. Have a great time with James Allen and learn uh, what you can from him. Recognize the important role that he played and learn um, whatever you can. Take away whatever truth that you can. He was a, he was a great man.